As we continue with digital painting, I just want to show you some of the past instructor and student examples that are in Canvas for you for this project. And I have this little animated work workflow process. That's a lot of what we're going to be following for my, my werewolf, where's Waldo. But at the end, it was kind of interesting. Remember, as much as you put down pixels to finish these off, to, to stylize them, I composited some watercolor rocks, you know, from, from public domain, like English watercolors from the 18th century on top of them at the end. And you can always just have an experimental spirit with digital painting in a way that you, you can't quite with traditional painting, right? As long as you're building it with layers, you don't need to worry about ruining it. So some different examples, you know, some classic kind of pseudo caricature examples, some very heavy shape painting, animal examples. I like this past student example because it shows there's nothing, there's no rules to digital painting for what techniques you use where. You know, the hair is modeled almost photorealistically. The eyes have all this soft atmosphere, but the mouth is left pretty graphic. And then, and things can be resolved on this still. You know, you're not gonna have a ton of time to finish this, but I kind of love the way that the dress is handled, right? So you can play with, with different approaches to it. And then the reason we do it on a white, just blank background is you can always add a background later. You can be very creative in your color choices. So we looked at, at Andy's work before, but what was interesting is he took his, his photo reference and then he wanted to use colors, use his palette from his favorite piece of clothing, right? And so you can choose colors in all kinds of interesting ways. You can also, this was a pretty straightforward, you know, painting of this rhinoceros, but to make it more interesting, I used warp and I, you know, change the proportions and the angle a little bit because that made a better silhouette because art is art, right? We're not limited to what we see in the photo. Okay. So what we've done so far, this is our third tutorial video, 15 minute tutorial video on this, is I picked my subject. I found some inspiration. Good to have more than one image if you can. And then I just started blocking out on top of a sketch layer, the uh, the underpainting at a pretty high opacity. So I have it set up here. It's setting up is really important in digital painting, like how you use the Photoshop space. And I have my reference images that I can steal colors from here. And then I have my actual painted canvas with its layers. Now, how you set up layers is important. So I start with a blank white canvas layer that I lock. I don't ever want to paint anything on that because that's going to be the blank background that I can swap for something else later. On top of that, I created a sketch layer. I painted it at a higher opacity. And then remember, you can always take your opacity of layers down. And that's a way of blending different paint layers. So let me even take that down a little bit further, maybe to about 50%. And now I'm doing a fairly opaque, because I'm using a brush that's about 70% opacity, shape painting layer kind of underneath. And I'm just using a basic brush. Some of you are asking what brush should you start with? And I'm using a tablet, so I want to use the fourth brush down from the default brushes. So this soft round and hard round, that doesn't allow for pressure sensitivity in any way. The next two, it's hard to scroll here, let's see. The next two, soft round and hard round, allow for the pressure sensitivity for the size. And so that's what I'm using. So that when I push harder, it is thicker. And when I barely push, it's a nice thin little strip. Just like with a, a regular kind of round pointed brush. You can always adjust your own hardness. So I, I choose the, the hard round 
size pressure sensitive one, this one. That's the brush I'm using. But I, I set its hardness a little bit off of 100%, because that helps to, to blend those strokes a little bit. And then I use a size that's kind of as big as I'm comfortable with. All right. And I can steal colors by holding down Option. And because I'm only doing it at 70%, I have to layer up the paint a few times to get the full opacity. So at this point, once you've started to, to block out your image, I'm just doing pretty much a direct painting version of, of this photo right now. I'm not making him a werewolf quite yet. The key is to try to cover up as much of the white as you can. Because the underpainting should really fill the space. And I can start introducing new colors. And that's why I just like to use a really basic brush without any texture in it because I want it to be solid pixels on this layer. So you see that 70%. You see that uh, hardness, how it blends slightly. It's not like one pixel edge, like Duotone's hard edge coloring. Whoops. And if I give him a pimple, that pimple is strong. So. I'm stealing colors from my reference, I'm stealing colors from myself, and I'm trying to block in and fill in as much of this white as possible. And I'm not too worried about details yet. And I'm, I only have one paint layer, so that paint layer is destructive, which means each time I put something down, I lose the pixels underneath. Right. After I've covered up all the white, my additional paint layers will be additive. So they'll go on a new layer on top and they will mix with the pixels underneath or add to them. They might cover them up, but they won't destroy them. So I'll always have the option to kind of work back to my, my underpainting, my base layer if I need to, like using turpentine on an oil painting. And you're going to notice you're going to have trouble blending on your shape painting layer, your underpainting, because we're working at such a high opacity. So it's not so much about blending, though there's a little bit of that going on at only 70%. But we're going to do more of that later. And I'm not adding accessories like glasses until a later step. But I do want to try to observe big shadow shapes. basically get kind of the spacing where I want it to block out the main forms. If I'm trying to get likeness, I want to really try to observe the distances between different parts of the face. I'm going to widen his jaw a little bit. But like some of the inspiration I shared in the last, in the previous videos, I'm trying to not be so perfection oriented and just have fun with it. Because those tend to be the digital paintings I admire the most. Give him a little bit of a five o'clock shadow here. Going to get a lot stronger as he becomes a werewolf. And then, though the face and the eyes, especially, are the focal point and are the fun part of a portrait, you need to treat all of it. 
So I definitely need to make sure I cover his neck. And the seam going into the shirt. The shirt might get torn eventually, but right now it's intact. If you make a mark you don't like, just Command Z. Go back in your history. And notice I'm really trying not to use lines. I'm trying to use the shapes of the brush. So thick to thin and overlapping with other shapes. And I'm also not zooming in very much. You can zoom in a little bit, but you want to look at the whole picture. And when you begin a digital painting, this is why they're labor intensive. You don't want to zoom in and focus on details too early because they're going to look terrible. If you really zoom in, you just see, yeah, it looks like a clunky brush created this. But, so we're just trying to fill in white shapes right now. You want to save every once in a while. You can see my computer kind of glitching back to an earlier state sometimes. This can take a lot of processing because it has to remember each step. And I know we don't need a portrait of just another white guy. That's why I'm going to make him into a werewolf. I'm going to try to mess with the white guy. He's already got somewhat crazy eyes, so that's kind of fun. All right. So what is missing? Well, it can't be recognizable as Waldo without the striped shirt. So though the face is more fun, I need to address that as well. You need to make sure you're communicating what you want to communicate with even just your most basic shape painting layer. It's already so different than digital coloring in all the variations that we build in. And then any experience you have with traditional painting definitely helps with this. Things like reflected light, core shadows, form shadows versus cast shadows, all of that's going to help you get the illusion you want. But I'm just trying to do it with blocks of color right now. Okay, so what do I need to do for the shirt? I can look at some of my other reference. And remember, I put it all on one screen grab here, so I can just use my hand and like move it around. God, it's an ugly shirt. So I get to, to make it a little bit better, maybe. Make it my own thing. So I already have reds. I can steal more reds. These are going to be a little different because it's a different type of photo. I like that shadow red in particular. I can start to kind of hint at the shoulders. So by doing it at 70%, I would never suggest doing one of these underpaintings at 100% opacity. Every stroke you do blends just a little bit with what's underneath it. And that helps you give, get more diversity of, of colors to steal from, to use, to blend with, etc. So as you see, I'm painting with white now. But white is not white. There's tones of it. It can be cool white. It can be warm white. And I don't love painting on a, always just on a white background. So as soon as I kind of block this in, oh, I have another ear. Then I can change it to maybe a middle gray background, like we 